Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me on this course and without further ado, we will get straight on to the LEGO investing content. What you can learn in this course is uh, storing your LEGO sets, how to effectively store your LEGO sets and not uh, damage them in the storage process because obviously when you're LEGO investing, you're investing in these sets for the longer term. So I'm talking one year maybe as a minimum and then five years, maybe even to 10 years as a maximum, but generally maybe that one to five year mark with most sets coming in at two to three years. So a lot of the sets you'll be, you'll be sort of picking them up at a cheap price storing them for a couple of years and then reselling them when the value has sufficiently increased just like you would a stock or a share or uh, some sort of bond or something like that it's, it's just the same it's, it's just uh, it's very very similar in the investing style it's just you've got a physical product i have got a lego set here just to show you uh, one from my portfolio which unfortunately i'm not as proud of this isn't that great of an investment it's the uh, lego 60 years set uh, so basically these were done as a promo for the LEGO 60th anniversary, I believe it was this year in 2018. Um, but yeah, I thought I would just show you that one very quickly. You can see the boxes. Uh, this box in particular is actually quite strong for a LEGO box. But some other LEGO sets uh, come in weaker boxes. And what we're going to talk about right now is the storage. So in the next section, we'll be talking about storage and I'll be showing you or telling you how you can uh, store your Lego set effectively. So then guys, how can you store your Lego set effectively? I wanted to talk about this first before we get onto actually purchasing Lego sets, um, obviously finding out how you can determine what a good set to invest in is, because if you've not got your storage right, then it doesn't matter how many sets you buy, how much profit you think you're gonna make in a couple of years, if you can't store those sets properly, they will get damaged and you have lost a good portion of your income. Obviously, if boxes get damaged, it's not the end of the world, but obviously, certainly it will. It will impact the price you can achieve depending on where you're selling it. If you're selling it on eBay, a slightly damaged box might not affect the price as much as maybe if you're selling it on somewhere like Amazon FBA because Amazon customers are a bit more strict and uh, obviously then you'll have to lower your price in accordance with the damage on the box. Uh, just generally, if you're a reseller of any kind, you kind of know the differences between selling on eBay and Amazon. Amazon generally is a lot stricter, so that means you kind of have to put your price down if there is a small amount of damage on it. Whereas on eBay, you can kind of get away with it if there is a bit of damage on it, even if you do mention it in the listing, someone will, will be prepared to pay a decent price still. So it depends on where you sell it, but obviously it will uh, greatly impact the price you can get if your Lego sets get damaged. So basically what we've got here is we've just got a standard Lego set. Now, I would always store these, or I do store these in um, basically in plastic tubs. So I'm going to put a photo up there of what I kind of mean, up that side even, of what I sort of mean. I'm, I'm meaning the very, very strong plastic tubs, kind of really useful storage boxes, that sort of level of um, protection. Very, very uh, good. They can stack, they stack it on top of each other. And I use that to store all of my Lego sets. Now, we're going to talk about in the next segment about um, basically the differences between buying bigger sets and smaller sets. Um, but obviously, I, I generally, just as a precursor to that segment, I generally invest in smaller sets. So I can uh, basically just put all my sets in a plastic box, line them up, and then put the lid on, and then obviously stack on top of that. So I don't really have any worry of storing the larger sets. But we're going to talk about bigger sets versus little sets in a minute, uh, in the next segment. But what I wanted to say as well is if you are storing your Lego sets, uh, another great tip with storing them is do not store them that way. Do not stack one upon another, so don't stack them like that, that way, because if you've got a lot of pressure on a Lego set like that, uh, with loads of different ones on top of it, then the box is going to slowly cave in over time. Now, obviously, you would need a fair amount of pressure on it, but it can still happen even if you've only got a little amount of pressure on it. So I always stack them that way. I, well, I don't stack them, I actually line them up like that. Sometimes I may, if I've got a big tub, I may stack them this way and then put one Lego set on top of them. However, I don't generally like doing 
doing that either because I still feel it might uh, damage this box. And as I say, if I'm choosing to sell them on Amazon specifically, um, that may affect the price that I can achieve. And the investment that I've got in, in these LEGO sets can be quite a high investment so if you've got a high investment of, of in something you don't want you, you want to prevent any damage to that item basically and protect your investment so yeah certainly another big tip is just to actually n never stack them like that in the car in the uh, plastic boxes but always stack them this way that way that sort of upright position now you might be thinking well I don't really want to buy, you know, big plastic storage tubs. It's going to cost a lot of money, all that sort of stuff. There's two two options for you then if you don't want to do that. You can either buy cheaper plastic storage tubs and hope that things go okay. Or you could actually either buy or try and source from supermarkets or wherever some kind of decent boxes. So what I'm talking about that is decent second-hand boxes that have double walls. Now, make sure they have double walls if they're second-hand boxes, because if you use second-hand boxes and they're just very, very flimsy boxes, that may affect the storage. It may affect uh, the, the Lego sets inside the boxes. So if you're going down the route of using um, obviously second hand boxes I would be certainly be very careful and use double walled ones and try and get them the same sort of size so when you stack them they will stack nicely and they're not going to cave into each other into each other or anything like that so be careful with using that but that is another cheap alternative to storing these lego sets as well of course if you've got shelving available or you've got some some sort of shelving in a wardrobe or a cupboard or a closet, um, then you can use that if you are maybe a smaller time investor and you don't, you, you know, you don't necessarily have uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, tw twenty boxes of of Lego. Obviously, if you're just a smaller investor, you can use just cupboards and shelves and stuff like that but again let the rules that i've told you apply don't stack them one on top of the other in the cupboard try and separate them out nicely try and uh sort of put them next to each other um in an upright position as well so storage is key obviously where you store these things make sure you're not storing them in anywhere that could be like a damp environment or anything like that um anywhere that might be I don't know, might have leaks or something like that. that. I mean, this is all common knowledge, but I do want to at least say it on the course just so that then you're aware because Lego boxes can easily get ruined. The Lego inside is probably not going to get ruined, but the Lego boxes will get ruined and then you can't sell them as new. You end up selling them as used and you end up not making any profit on your investment after two years of waiting and having your money tied up in a Lego set. So you want to be aware that they are stored in a good uh, facility, in a good area and in good boxes. Obviously having like the plastic storage tubs might give them some protection if they are really tightly closed in from uh, something like water damage or something like that. But in, in, inevitably something bad is going to happen if you store them in an area that you know maybe is prone to leakage or maybe you know isn't quite the best area to be storing the lego obviously a better drier place would be uh, would be ideal really anyway so i'll leave the storage uh, section there and we will move on to which is next which is large sets versus smaller sets right then guys so this is going to be bigger sets versus smaller sets and what should you invest in? Now, obviously, I, I'm the type of investor that likes smaller Lego sets because, for me, they're easier to store. And that is a fact. You can pile a larger amount of smaller sets in the area that you would get maybe one or two bigger sets. But, obviously, um, I don't know what you would like. Maybe you would like to invest in the bigger sets. And I'm not necessarily saying that one is completely better than the other it really depends on for one your budget and how much you're willing to spend and how much you're willing to have tied up in these items and for two obviously the amount of storage space you have they're the two big 
uh, parameters for this as well as things like time come into this obviously if you're doing Lego investing to any sort of standard you will want to keep a spreadsheet because obviously when you sell your Lego investments you are going to have to pay tax on that in this country I believe it's capital gains tax in the UK in another country it might be different but obviously you need to keep some records to be able to know how much you owe in tax and all that sort of stuff basically let's say you've got a decent budget let's just say you want to invest a thousand pounds or let's go with a thousand dollars I don't know whether more people in the USA are gonna watch this course in the UK but I know that dollars are more a universal currency let's say so let's say we've got a thousand dollars to invest now what we can do with that is we can maybe get a hundred ten dollar sets from various different themes to diversify our risk because we don't ever want to get one we don't want to ever get just one theme, so we don't just want, ever want to have our portfolio uh, built up of all Star Wars sets or all, um, I don't know, Lego Jurassic World sets or anything like that. Um, so we want to diversify because certain themes might not do as well as we first thought. So, if we want to diversify, maybe we want, you know, $10 sets or $12 sets, then we're going to be able to get sort of 80 to 100 of those sort of 10 to $12 sets. Now, in the 80 to 100, if you wanted to get maybe two big sets, let's say two really big $400 sets and maybe a further $200 set if you're doing big sets, the amount of space that's taken up is probably about equal, to be honest. However, if um, if you're thinking about the big sets, with the big sets, I always find, and this is why I am an investor in small sets, if you've got big Lego sets, they are harder to store in the sense of keeping those boxes intact. Because if you've got a big Lego set, yes, it might take up... It, in both of the examples I've shown with the smaller sets and the bigger sets, it's going to take up roughly the same amount of space. Maybe the larger sets might take up a little bit more, or maybe the little sets might take up a little bit more. But what, what will happen with the bigger sets is you probably won't be able to fit them in boxes, in storage containers. And obviously that has a big glaring problem. If you don't fit them in the storage containers, they don't have much protection. You can put them in a cupboard, you can put them in a wardrobe or wherever, that's fair enough. However, if something was to fall on that set in the wardrobe, something was to fall off a, a higher shelf in that wardrobe or whatever, or hit it, or you open the wardrobe quite quickly, forget it's in there, and end up banging into it, or something like that, anything, any of these things can happen. We're all human, we all make mistakes. So if that happens, you make a little bit of a dent in the box, something whacks the box, obviously as I say something could just fall and whack the box, then that's got no protection, that's now got a dent, dent in the box and basically you will have to sell that for cheaper than uh, if it was just a completely brand new and sealed lovely condition box. So that's the issue for me with storing larger sets. Now in terms of ROI on larger sets or smaller sets, if you pick it really depends what sets you pick. I mean, I've seen great ROIs on, uh, return on investment, that is, by the way, on larger sets, specifically the Jurassic World set and the Scooby-Doo sets that we saw in 2014, 2015. They, the ROI on those larger sets were really, really good. The ROI on the smaller sets were really, really good. In fact, I think the ROI on the smaller sets might have been a little bit better, but the ROI on the bigger sets were still very very good and the bigger sets I feel also had um, a little bit more appeal so that's something you've got to factor in as well the appeal of the sets certain larger sets might have more appeal because they've got more minifigures in maybe they've got a got an exclusive minifigure in uh, opposed to maybe the smaller sets not having as desirable minifigs in so that's something you've got to take into account as well is there any exclusives in the set is it a nice big play set that is going to appeal to people? And certainly in the case of the Jurassic World sets and the Scooby-Doo sets, that was a good selling point for the larger sets, and it's really helped them out in the secondary market. Um, in terms of the barrier to entry for smaller sets, is a lot lower. So if someone, let's say someone doesn't have $1,000, let's say they have 
$50 or $100 to invest. The barrier to entry with the smaller sets is a lot lower. You can, you don't need a lot of money to actually invest in those smaller sets and also you don't need a lot of storage area. Again, that's why I gravitate towards the smaller sets. Now, there is one, well, there are a few larger sets in my portfolio, not just one, but there is one larger set that I have actually had damage happen to it. And sometimes these things are inevitable, but obviously this is why sometimes, in my personal opinion, I gravitate towards smaller sets rather than larger sets because of the fact that they are bigger, they are harder to store in that sense, and damage can happen. Now, if you would like to get into maybe bigger LEGO set investing, and you want to get multiple big sets because it's fair enough, you know, you might want to buy a couple of bigger sets, a little bit of a nest egg, put them away for five years or whatever, then get them out, sell them on eBay, sell them on Amazon, wherever. But if you want to be a serious Lego investor in the big set sort of realm, and what I mean by big set is any set that is generally, there's not any rules to this, but I would say around the £50 mark or $50 mark, anywhere from about $40, $50 and then up is generally what I would class as more of a bigger set than a smaller set. Smaller sets are more of the battle packs, the Star Wars battle packs, the obviously now the um, Marvel battle packs, and the, you know, the Lego superheroes battle packs, things like that, you know, the smaller 10, 20, maybe $30 packs, um, you know, generally they have a lot of minifigs in, they're great for the kids, um, a lot of people like them, but they are the smaller sort of sets, but let's just say you want to create a big investment portfolio of all larger sets. Well, what you um, will then need to do with storage again is you will need to actually have a large area to store those sets and you will need to have a lot of capital to invest. You could invest and make a great return on a large amount of smaller sets for a lot less money than you could a, lot, a large amount of larger sets. It just makes sense if you were to buy you know, a hundred uh, ten dollar sets, you're going to pay far less than if you were going to buy, you know, a hundred or fifty or whatever the, the amount of larger sets that are maybe three or four hundred dollar sets. So it really depends with what you want in terms of small, whether you want to invest in small sets or larger sets. It really depends on the two things I mentioned at the start of this segment, which are budget, time constraints with actually. Um, you know, entering all these items into the spreadsheet because that's another downfall for smaller sets actually. If, you, if you're buying a lot of smaller sets, loads of different variants of smaller sets, you're going to have to type into this spreadsheet all these different variants of sets. Whereas if you just buy one or two variants of larger sets, you only have two little uh, things to enter into your spreadsheet. So in that respect, um, it's actually easier in the time regard of you know entering these things into your spreadsheet and taxation and all that sort of stuff with buying the bigger sets over the small sets so that is a good point for the larger sets as well but if you are actually um you know thinking about doing smaller sets or larger sets really does just come down to budget space and time so they're the three things that i wanted to emphasize in that se this segment i want you to understand that it doesn't matter so much if you buy bigger sets or smaller sets sometimes the roi can be better on smaller sets uh, sometimes it can be better on larger sets but generally it really depends on your circumstance how much you're willing to spend what sort of space you've got available to store these sets and the time you've got available to be doing the accounting doing the spreadsheet you know putting the these uh, items into the spreadsheet, you know, making a spreadsheet for these items, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I'll leave this segment here because I've rambled on far too long. So I will see you in the next segment, which I'll be talking through my five step process to actually um, picking out a great set, picking out a good, successful set that is going to do well for you in the longer term. Hi guys, so in this segment I'm going to be sharing with you my five step process how you can find a winning Lego set. Now, this isn't foolproof, this isn't guaranteed, nothing in life ever is. However, I developed this process and it's worked for me really, really well in actually making that final decision in getting a Lego set that I actually want to invest in or not. It helps me with that final decision in actually 
finally investing in that set or not. So it's brilliant for um, obviously helping you with that decision at the end of the process once you've um, found your Lego set and once you've done these steps that I'm going to talk about. However, you do need a little bit of ingenuity yourself at the start of this process in actually identifying a Lego set that you may think is good. However, if you don't know how to identify a Lego set that might be good, you can literally just, you can kind of game this system in a way by just going on Lego Shop at home, looking at certain themes, going into maybe the Star Wars theme or into any other theme, it doesn't matter, I just say Star Wars because that's quite a popular theme and it's been good in the past, it has been a bit hit or miss for investment but it's been good on the majority um, for actually investing in. It's slowing down a little bit now though unfortunately, but you go in the Star Wars theme let's say, or you go in another different theme, you know, superheroes, Lego superheroes, Marvel superheroes, something like that, and you pick a set. And then obviously you can go through this 5% process and if at the end of it you've got the results that I'm going to talk about now and I'm going to um, actually tell you what results you want to be seeing. If you've got the results that you want to be seeing then you might want to go ahead and actually invest in the set. If you don't find the results that you want then obviously you can just go back to the drawing board, go on Lego Shop at home again, look for another set and do the process until you actually find a Lego set. So sometimes it can can be even easier than it actually appears. So I wanted to first off uh, state a few little notes. So this isn't going to work on sets that either, this is, sorry, this is only going to work on sets that are either very recently retired or that are listed as retiring soon on the Lego Shop at Home website. Now you might be thinking, how do I know if this is retiring soon on the Lego Shop at Home website? How do I know whether it's recently retired? Well, you want to go on Lego Shop at Home, and I believe if you just filter by um, basically retiring soon, um, it should be on the left-hand side of the page. It should be under one of the options on the left hand side of the page to actually filter the results just like you would on sort of any website just a filter the results kind of tab and you click retiring soon and it'll pull up all the sets for you in a nice list that fit those parameters also you want to go on brick set and actually this leads me into my first point as well um, so you want to go on brick set and then go to the bot you actually want to type in your Lego set number at the uh, top of the page in the search it will pull up all information about the set you want to go down to availability at lego.com or lego.co.uk depending on which country you're in or lego.fr you know if you're in France or any other country and it will t show you the availability at Lego shop at home and that is powerful because it will show you when it first became available and when it actually retired if the set has retired now if it hasn't retired it'll say uh, to now so it'll, it'll be just continuation basically and it'll, it'll continue to say now until uh, there is an actual date of when it retires but if it does have a date there then that may be the date that it retired. It can sometimes be deceptive because it doesn't always mean it's going to be retired. Sometimes that set uh, is taken on a little bit of a break and gone out of production for a little bit and then it comes back into production. However, 90% of the time it is going to be the fact that that set's retired. You can actually determine that a little bit better on whether that's just uh, sort of out of production for a little bit or whether it's actually definitely retired. You can determine that by the shelf life. So it'll tell you, as I mentioned, when it became available on Lego Shop at Home. If it's been two or three years since it became available and it's only a smaller set, then the chances are that's going to be a retired set now and it will have just retired. If it's a larger set, then yes, the chances are that probably is still a retired date. However, with some larger sets, uh, particularly the larger Star Wars sets, sometimes they just go out of production for a little bit and then they come back in and, and then obviously it will say it's still available. So that can trick you a little bit. However, with the majority of sets, with the vast majority of sets, it shouldn't be too hard to work that out and you should be able to actually find out the, the retired date and it will actually be a retired date. So you wanna check on brick set. That is my first tip of this five step process. You wanna find that Lego set that you're, you're looking at. You wanna make sure it's retiring soon on Lego Shop at home and you want to check on brick set as well 
Uh, if it's uh, obviously if it's a retiring soon set, it will still say now. However, if you're choosing a retired set that you maybe know about uh, because it's just retired, you can check this on various websites. If you type in Google uh, Lego recently retired sets, I believe there's a, a website. I don't know what the website is called, but it's something like uh, Lego retiring sets or something like that. Anyway, if you type that in Google, you will get that website up. And basically that shows you all the sets that retired recently, so you can then get a set from there, you get the set number, you paste it into brick set, and then you can see how long ago it retired, and that is the first step of the process done. You've got a Lego set that is now either very soon going to be retired, or is actually already retired. Now why would you want to do that opposed to getting a set that's brand new? Well, if a set's brand new on Lego Shop at Home, that means it's going to be at retail price for the next two years or however long its shelf life is. So if you buy a brand new set that's on Lego Shop at Home, what's going to happen is you're just going to be sat on that set for two years while it's still remaining at retail price. You want to get these sets just as Lego are finishing production on them because then that is the time the price goes up. It's just supply and demand. It's it's the law of supply and demand. Once the supply is cut but there is still a demand there for that product, the price goes up and vice versa. If there's a larger supply of that product and the demand isn't there, the price goes down. It's simple. So, uh, it's obviously simple economics. It's supply and demand. Been here for probably two or three hundred years now in, in what we know. I believe it was Adam Smith who actually first thought about uh, sort of supply and demand and the, the principle of the invisible hand. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it's quite simple really. So you want to actually get, that is why, that is the reason why I'm telling you to get retired sets or the ones that are listed as retiring soon because that is going to mean that you're going to have less time to wait before you end up having to get your money out of that set and obviously get profit on that set. You might only have to wait uh, one year or two years opposed to the four years you might have to wait uh, if you've got a brand new set because you'll have to wait the two years that it's still at retail price for and still available on the shelves and then you'll have to wait another two years for the market to actually settle down and prices to actually start to rise in line with demand um, and then you're able to sell it because obviously this is a waiting game it's about trying to it, it, it's like watching a stock if you watch a stock every day you can see it's growing and growing and growing and over the course of a year or two you might hold that position and then obviously at the end of the two years you might sell it for a great profit so obviously you want to keep an eye on the market the way you do that is obviously just checking on ebay and amazon at prices it's quite easy just type your set number into ebay and check what your sort of set is doing uh, and obviously if it's a retired set then it should be steadily increasing over the months and over the years now it is a very steady process but you should see on ebay or, or on amazon or wherever you're selling it should slowly go up now over at certain sets go up a lot faster than others jurassic world and scooby-doo again you'll hear me mention them quite a lot because they were incredible they went up they the what actually the basically the the basic scooby-doo set which was uh the mummy the mystery museum or something i think the the very small set was called um that is actually worth about six times its retail value and it's only been uh retired for about three years now less than four years actually and it's worth six times that's a 600 percent gain on your money so it is incredible it really is now those sets don't come along all the time. You've got to be careful. You've got to know what those sets are. And obviously, this five-step process will help you do that. So I'm going to get on to the next one now in the next segment. So I'll see you in the next segment, guys. Hi, guys. It's Adam, and welcome to step two of my five-step process for LEGO investing. So, basically, in the last step, we analysed the set that was retiring soon, or that has already retired, and that means that, obviously, we can get the quickest turnaround time on that set. So, what we've established is that that set that we've picked 
is going to be a fairly quick turnaround, maybe the one to two year mark instead of a set that we might be waiting for uh, for four or five years to actually mature and become ready to actually sell and make a good profit on. So step two has to do with checking Google Shopping. So you want to type your set into Google and click the shopping tab. So type your set number into Google, click the shopping tab, and then you'll be confronted with loads of different retailers who will sell that product. Now, what I found just this little, this is just a additional part of the process really that I added in, just because I, again, it ties in with that supply and demand. So basically what I found was, if I found a low amount of um, Google shopping results for that set, and maybe there was less sort of established retail, retailers selling that set, it showed me that Actually, that, that set that is retiring soon or that set that's retired, it, the, the supply is already restricting further and further down. And that is great for if you are investing in a set because obviously if that, if that set, if the supply of that set is already restricted when it's just starting to retire or just very recently retired, it means that it's gonna gonna have a lower supply on eBay, on Amazon, on the other selling platforms. Because obviously, if the big independent retailers have stopped selling it, then it means that less sellers are gonna be able to get their hands on it to then resell traditionally or to invest in. So that means that basically you'll be able to um, find that you can find that set um, using another step that I'm going to talk about later on but you can actually have a good idea that that set is going to be a potential for the future so if you have low uh, if there is low results on Google Shopping or if there is uh, just you know a few shops selling it or maybe it's mainly third-party sellers on other websites rather than established retailers it, sh it shows you that this set might be a winner in the future because the supply is already so restricted and that is really really powerful so checking Google Shopping is a big one and since I, I thought I might be uh, talking a little bit longer about that, however, I feel like I've covered that in enough detail. It is only an additional part of the process, really, that I added in uh, once I had finished the step process. And I thought, actually, that is a good point to refer to as well. So I'm going to go on to number three in this segment rather than starting another segment. So number three is check the Amazon price, sales rank, and number of FBA offers available. And basically, this will tell you, again, it's just more evidence, more data that you can collate for showing that this is going to be a good set to invest in. So what I look for is I go on the Amazon seller app. I am a, I am a seller on Amazon. I sell on Amazon FBA um, and I have access to the seller app. I type my Lego set number in and I check, I pull up the page and I will show photos of this as well uh, next to me here. And basically I will be checking for one sales rank. So really I like it to be 5,000, 10,000 maximum, even less than that if I can. But the reason I want it to be so low and I know that I'm touching on a bit more of a complex subject here because obviously we're getting into Amazon FBA and sales rank and all that sort of stuff. But don't worry too much about that for now. I mean, this isn't an, an Amazon FBA course. This isn't an eBay course or anything like that. It is a, a Lego investing course, but generally I just use this as a marker. So don't worry too much. If you just go off the fact that I'm saying, you know, look for that 5,000 or that 10,000 in the sales rank at the top of the page or near the top of the page, it has a little hashtag. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see next to me, a little hashtag and then it'll have the sales rank. And uh, as long as it's like, 5,000, 10,000 as a maximum. Basically, why I want it to be so low, uh, and that is a really, really good sales rank if you're selling on Amazon, it basically means the sales rank that it, how fast it sells, and 5,000 or 10,000 in, in toys and games is a pretty good sales rank. The reason I want it so low is because that shows the, the, the product actually has popularity. It's selling regularly now. So that means that even in a year's time when it's been retired, 
although the sales rank might creep up a little bit, it might get a little bit slower, and it might go a little bit higher to maybe 30, 40, 50,000, it's still going to sell fairly consistent, uh, consistently, and you're still going to have some sales there. So you want to check for Amazon sales rank, and you also want to check the price of the FBA offers. So specifically the FBA offers, and obviously, uh, that is on, that is like the, there's basically six numbers on the Amazon seller app. And it is the middle number on the bottom row, which is the number of FBA offers. It'll say five FBA offers, and then it'll say a price. And that is the price that the FBA offers are coming in at. Now, if you don't have an Amazon seller app, if you are not a seller on Amazon, you can see the Amazon ranking detail on any Amazon product page. So type your Lego set into Amazon, the Lego set number, and then go onto the product page, scroll down to the bottom, and it will have a few facts and figures. And one of those facts and figures will be Amazon best sellers rank. That is the exact same number as on the uh, app, on the seller app. So if you don't have the seller app, anyone can check sales rank on Amazon itself on the website. So go to your product and then scroll down, check the best sellers rank, and um, then obviously you wanna check the price. Again, you can do this on Amazon uh, on the website. Again, just go into the listing, into the pricing page with all the different offers, and you will be able to filter by price there as well by selecting the little prime button next to it because those are FBA specific um, offers. So basically what you want to see or what I've determined that I would like to see using this step process, five step process, is FBA offers coming in at above the retail price and not only above the retail price but a fair bit above the retail price. So maybe 20, 30, 40 percent and above the retail price. So if you've got a set that is £12, really you want the FBA offers to come in at a minimum of maybe about £15, £16, £17, if not closer to £20 or £25, because that will show you that the set, obviously, let's say it's a set that's just been retired, um, obviously the flow, the supply has been restricted massively on Lego Shop at Home and on other, other independent retailers. So everyone then goes to Amazon as well and picks off the ones that are, that are on Amazon. If it's a fairly fast selling item, Item, which it probably is, then the, the price is going to go up. Again, this is supply and demand. Higher increased supply, uh, sorry, increased demand or uh, same amount of demand but lower supply will mean that the price will go up. And all those customers who wanted that item on Lego Shop at Home but that it's just been retired on Lego Shop at Home are going to go to Amazon or, or, or the like sort of platform and buy it up from there. And that means increased sales on Amazon and then the price goes up on Amazon. So, that is great because that's like the initial price hike of a Lego set. And that means that it has good popularity, it has strong popularity, and it could do well in the future. It, it, especially if it's going, if that initial price hike is quite a lot, or if there's just a steady price uh, increase over time. Actually going on to Amazon, looking at this data for yourself is great. And actually looking there, seeing what the set is doing in the short term is great because it basically tells you a little bit of information of what it could do in the long term. Now if a Lego set is staying stagnant and the sales rank is 50,000 or 100,000 or 200, 300,000, like really not the best, um, and also the price is in line with retail price even though it's retired or even though it's retiring soon, or maybe it's actually below retail price, I would say that's a deal breaker straight away. Do not invest in that Lego set. There are there are very, very few circumstances, but in my personal experience, a lot of those sets, if it's only coming in at the same as retail or below retail, then especially that below retail, that's the real deal breaker. If a set is coming in below uh, retail, then generally, even if it's retiring soon, obviously there's been an overproduction of it or there's just too many, you know, it's just too many out there. Um, and, and it's not going to be a set that's going to perform as well as other sets in the long term, in my opinion, judging on the results that I've had and the things that I've, uh, obviously, the research that I've made. So obviously with that one, if you have certain parameters, if that set is coming under retail, 
if that sales rank isn't very good, um, if there's maybe a lot of competition as well on Amazon, if there's loads of different people selling it, I'm meaning, you know, 50 plus people selling it, again, that's something you've got to be careful of, and that, that would mean that set is out of the running for uh, actually uh, an investment, really. So this one is a key one. Uh, obviously, the first step was pretty key as well. Uh, the third step is very, very vital. The second step, as I say, is something that aids in the third and fourth step in just giving you a little bit more information about the supply and demand as well as, as I say, the third and fourth step. So I'll leave it there for this segment, guys, and next we're going to talk about looking at eBay data to and analyse analyze a little bit more about that Lego set as well and, and very similar to actually looking at the Amazon data. So guys, similar to the previous step in step 3, we're now going to do the same but not for Amazon, for eBay. Because obviously it doesn't matter too much where you're going to be selling this stuff. These two platforms, what we're actually looking for is supply and demand and pricing and how, how the mark... Because what we're looking at on these two platforms is the market for that Lego set. We are we are looking at the, the history of the market, we are looking at how the market is performing just like you would with a stock or a share or something like that. You look at the market before you invest in it. You look at its past history and that's what we're doing on eBay and Amazon. So it doesn't matter where you're going to be selling these uh, items in future once you decide to sell them for a profit. It just matters now at looking at the market and seeing what the market is doing to get an idea of what the future uh, could hold for that set and whether it would be a good set to invest in. That is the whole philosophy behind this five step process to determine whether this set is going to be good or not. So on eBay what you want to be doing is you want to be typing in your Lego set as you normally would and filtering by sold listings. On the PC that is basically to the left hand side of uh, the screen on eBay and you will have a load of different refinements on the left hand side. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see one of the refinements is sold listings. Just check that box for sold listings and it will bring up all the items and all the prices that have sold for that, uh, in that, for that sort of Lego set in the past, I believe it's the past three months. So all the prices, all the different sales from all the different people of that logo set in the past three months. So you want to see when you're pulling up this, a few sort of factors you want to be looking out for is a large amount of sales. You want to see that this thing is selling day in, day out. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe not every day, but certainly you would like to see it selling consistently. Uh, maybe even some days multiple times a day um, and you know making sure that there is demand again because those sales are going to tell you that there's demand so the same as with Amazon you want to be seeing the Lego set that is actually selling for above retail price now with Amazon generally prices are higher anyway so with eBay this is a good tester with Amazon you you're not quite sure whether um, you know whether those prices are just inflated because the Amazon seller fees are higher and then they're, they're obviously the sellers are just putting their prices up in line with that but on eBay you can really see the truth behind the prices of these Lego sets you can see if 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 they're selling, if this Lego set is selling for well above retail price on eBay, you know that that is going to be a decent investment because normally on eBay the prices are less than on Amazon so if a Lego set for, that is retail at £12 and that's just recently retired or is going to be retired soon and that's selling for 16 to maybe £20, then you know that that is probably going to be a good set to invest, invest in. And just to give you a real life example, um, I actually did this with a Lego set. It was... Um, a Speed Champions Lego set. I forget the number of the set, but it was a one of the Speed Champions line, and the Speed Champions have done phenomenally well in uh, the long-term market. I have used these. These are the five sets that I have used to do that well on those Speed Champion sets. And if you're looking to invest in Lego, I would certainly consider having a look at the Speed Champion set and just going through these five steps I'm talking about on a few of those LEGO Speed Champion sets because you might find that those sets are actually worth an investment and worth your money. So um, 
yeah, certainly you want to check eBay you, if it's selling above retail price, if it's selling consistently, if there's not many items listed as well. So if you uncheck sold listings and go back just to listed items, so just items that people currently have up for sale, and you can see that there's actually not, there's like a restricted supply of listed items, then that means, again, that's a good point because the market isn't oversaturated. So the market on eBay isn't oversaturated, but there is a great sell-through rate and there's great demand. That is a killer combination for a Lego set that is going to do well in the future. Every time I've looked at this, along with set, uh, step three as well of looking at on, uh, on Amazon and looking on brick set of when these sets are retired or when they're going to be retired, all that sort of stuff. Along with doing all that, it's a killer combination. It can tell you that that is a set to invest in. So look at the sold listings. Make sure there's a good demand for this product. Make sure it's selling regularly, you know, day in, day out if it can. Maybe even multiple times a day, as I said. And if it's got a low supply on eBay as well, not many current listings available, that is brilliant. That is going to be a brilliant set. And if you get it on a discount, you're going to do well. I can I can almost guarantee it because I have used this. Set. I can't guarantee it because nothing in life is guaranteed. But I can say with 80, 90 percent uh, sort of. Uh, almost definite basically is what I'm trying to say that it's gonna be a good set obviously there's a little bit more to it than that I am gonna explain themes as well in a minute um, actually looking at certain Lego themes because obviously it's not just down to supply and demand and all that sort of stuff however using this process if you've got a Lego theme that isn't the best it, it should actually wheedle out that theme or that Lego set anyway within this process. So if you have chosen a Lego set from, let's say, the Lego City theme, which isn't the best theme to invest in, if you have chosen a Lego set uh, like that, then this process will wheedle that out anyway. So it kind of this process kind of makes it very, very hard for you to actually pick a theme or a Lego set that is going to be um, actually, you know, a, a bad thing to invest in. You 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 will basically find that the parameters on this uh, sort of five-step process won't be ticked off by those Lego sets that you're that might not be the best and then you'll end up having to put them to the side and try again and go back to the, the start of the process so it's almost foolproof which is pretty pretty good and I'm really really happy that I actually made this process for myself and to share with you guys as well um, but certainly well what we'll do because we're coming to the end of the five-step process now I'll just quickly have a talk about themes so themes in Lego I'll just move to the front again because obviously I won't need screenshots so um, basically themes within Lego sets so um, basically themes are like Lego City or Lego Ninjago or Lego Friends and Lego Star Wars they're all just different sort of genres of Lego sets so you know different different um, ideas basically and we've got what are called the eternal themes which are Lego City and Lego Friends they're normally the two that's referred to as eternal themes and they're just basically themes that they get recycled year after year and Lego Lego sets get produced on Lego City and Lego Friends, as I say, year after year. They may do a rebrand of a, or a reproduction of an old set, so that means that Lego investing in Lego Eternal themes isn't the best because once a Lego set gets sort of reproduced, so let's say they did a Lego City Fire Station in 2011, I don't know if they did, but I'm just taking this as an example, and then they reproduced a similar version of that Lego City set again in 2014, the value of that 2011 one will go down considerably, and people won't be as interested in it interested in it as much because there's a new one just come out and it's like oh that one's fresh it's interesting and you know what there's been four or five lego uh, lego fire stations come out over the last 10 years or whatever so why do i need that one what's so special about that one so investing in lego eternal feet in <laughs> eternal yeah eternal that's right so yeah i don't know why i thought i got that wrong then but Investing in Lego Eternal themes isn't the best idea. However, that being said, there can be some good sets to invest in within those in Eternal themes. The Lego Ar the Lego City Arctic theme did quite well because, again, that's quite different. You know, Lego City Lego City in itself isn't that different, but Lego City Arctic is a little bit more different, and it captured people's imagination, and it meant that they did okay in 
the long-term market. However, now LEGO has just re-released some LEGO Arctic sets, so the price is probably going to go down on them. So again, just like stocks and shares, it's about knowing when to get out of these LEGO sets. So sometimes with eternal themes, if you're investing in LEGO internal themes, it might be better for a quick flip. So you buy it, at the end of its run and then you maybe make a quick sort of 50% margin, 70% margin on it in, within a year or maybe a year and a half and then obviously sell it before it gets re-released and the price goes down just as I say just like the stocks and shares market it goes up and down because of news that comes out and different uh, things that come out and, and scandals that happen and all this sort of stuff. Same with Lego sets but just in a, in a different sort of manner. It's very much with investing in it's it's one big one big sort of world investing and it all interlinks with each other it's just you're you're looking at a different asset class you're looking at a different thing and lego is just actually another way of investing but it's all very linked into other ways of investing as well so there's lego eternal themes we've got the licensed themes which are actually licensed um obviously un, you know under a licensing with star wars so lego has a license with star wars or with disney um to produce sort of lego stuff Star Wars, uh, obviously Lego Star Wars themed sets, we've got Lego Superheroes, DC and Marvel, and we've got loads of other licensed sets. Now, licensed sets do pretty well, however you still have got that kind of thing of, well, I don't know whether they're going to re-release that, re that set or not, however, with like sort of licensed themes, there's not as many re-releases. If you're getting the bigger sets like the Millennium Falcon and things like that, then there might be a few more re-releases. However, if you're getting an exclusive set that is quite different, that is quite new, or if you're getting a battle pack specifically or something like that, then the, the chances of those being re-released almost directly or identically are, are quite slim. I mean, yes, LEGO do produce new battle packs every year, but they are different and they don't impact the secondary market of the older ones that much um, as a long-term investment. As a short-term investment, they may do. They may, obviously, when a new battle pack comes out, the older one might suffer a little bit in the shorter term. However, if we're doing this as a long-term investment like I do for, you know, one to two year mark or maybe a bit longer, then obviously that won't matter to us a little short term blip won't matter to us but a longer term but obviously in the longer term that lego set that battle pack is still going to do well so obviously star wars battle packs things like that might be worth looking into and going through this uh, process and then we've got the set we've obviously got a lot more than this but i'm not going to explain all the different themes you can very you can very easily just go on lego shop at home and look at all the different themes all the different sets have basically ever been um so yeah basically We've also got one-off Lego themes. And what I mean by this is basically themes like, and I'll talk about this again, Scooby-Doo and Jurassic World, where they generally only come about once. Now, in Jurassic World, the, the Lego themes actually come back for Jurassic World, so it's not necessarily classed as a one-off theme anymore, but it almost is because it, it isn't an eternal theme. It isn't necessarily just a licensed theme. It's actually a licensed theme that is a kind of one-off theme. And um, they're only done once or maybe, you know, maybe a couple of times, but they're not done, uh, you know, a lot. They're not done like Star Wars, which is repeated every year as a licensed theme. It's just a one-off thing for a movie or for a TV show in that specific year and then that's it. So with those sorts of themes, if there is good demand for those TV shows, if there is good popularity for those films or TV shows like Jurassic World and, and Scooby-Doo, then they are going to do well in the secondary market. Um, and if you can get them on a discount, then you are probably going to do well. Obviously, again, put them through this process, and I'll talk about step five in the next segment as well. Um, but put them through this process, and they should come out okay. And as long as you get them on a discount, you're going to do pretty well. Right then guys, so we are now on the last segment. So we've made it to the end. Obviously this has probably been quite a long course, so I hope I've broken it up enough for you. Number five is search for the product. If everything on this list, all these different sets of the, uh, steps have been ticked off, 
and you're very very happy with the things that you're seeing you know it's got a low supply on Amazon and eBay but it's got high sell through it's got high demand it's got a good sales rank on on Amazon it's retiring soon or it's just retired you can check in Google shopping and there's very very few results from independent retail well not independent retailers but larger retailers such as maybe um, I don't know the entertainer in this country which is a toy shop Smith's toy superstores all that sort of stuff if there's very low supply on Google shopping all these different things then you know if there's good prices on eBay and Amazon as I mentioned then all those parameters are ticks and you're really really happy with uh, with obviously buying that Lego set to invest in the one thing I want to point out first is buy it at the end of its cycle so it's when it's retired or just just before it's retired and try and get it on a discount because you're not going to make that much money doing this if you buy everything at retail price even if you were to buy a lego set that is very 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 good at full retail price of 12 pound you know the average over maybe a course of a year or two that let's say it's a star wars battle pack or something like that is probably only going to go up to 25 or 30 pounds maximum even in the peak of quarter four in december when you know christmas buying is at its height probably only go going to go to 25 or 30 pound now 12 pound into 25 pound 30 pound minus your fees minus your postage well you might add postage on but minus your fees minus your packing material minus your time for packaging it up it's not going to be the best roi to be honest it's probably going to be less than 100 percent now that is great roi as an investment but at the same time, you can get better than that. So try and look for these items that are on a discount. If you can get these battle packs for 30, 40, 50% off uh, in a shop at the end of their cycle, then £6, £7 or £8 into £25 or £30 is much better a much better ROI than £12 into £30 or maybe you know we might even be able we might even get it for more more price than that if it's marked up in a store at maybe £13 or £14 so be careful at the prices you're paying always try and get things on a discount obviously it's just like shopping you want to go to the supermarket if you see something on discount then you're going to grab it if it's a, a you know a food that you really enjoy and uh, that you get you get every week then if it's on a 20 30 40 percent discount you're probably going to buy more than one of those so it's just the same with lego investing try and get things at a discount now you might be thinking right how can I search for a product if you've just told me that there's very low supply on eBay and Amazon, there's very low supply at uh, larger toy retailers, and Lego Shop at Home may have sold out or is just about to sell out? Well, there's a couple of ways to go about that. I know that sounds like, oh my god, this is an impossible task to do that. Well, it isn't. You've got to use your ingenuity a little bit. Go to independent toy shops. They may still stock it. And if they're, if it's coming to the end of its life, its shelf life, then they may actually have it at discount. So go to your independent toy retailers because they're not going to be on, they're not going to be listed on Google Shopping. Your independent toy retailer in your local town isn't going to be listed on Google Shopping. So that Google Shopping doesn't have any information for what that uh what that what the prices are at that retailer so go to your independent toy retailers and fingers crossed that they are there and if you can get them on a discount great if you think it's a brilliant brilliant set that's going to do really really well and it's maybe a one-off theme and you just think it's going to be very very popular in the secondary market then by all means if you want to pay retail price another way is to actually go on to google and search the web deep so I'm meaning actually go to the 30th page of Google, the 40th page of Google, look for independent retailers on Google, or maybe just lesser known retailers that aren't on Google Shopping. There are still some larger retailers that aren't on Google Shopping that are maybe only on the fifth page of Google. So look for independent retailers who are still selling it. Again, it, ideally, if you can get it on a discount, then that's great. And finally, Lego Shop at Home do something before a set retires. Not in every circumstance, but depending on the time of year, if it's sort of end of summer or if it's end of the Christmas season, so late December, early Jan, they will actually 
sell that at a discount. Generally, it'll be about 20 to 30%. However, I have seen as high as 50% on the Lego Shop at Home website. So go and find, obviously go on the Lego Shop at Home website, find that set and track it. Look on that site every day for, you know, a few weeks to see, obviously, if it's in the retiring soon section, that's going to be gone in the next sort of month or so. So you want to check that constantly to see right near it's, uh, right near the point it's going to be retired, see if they just put it down by 20% or 30%. So you've got to, that last step is a bit harder. Maybe go to your supermarket, maybe they won't be listed on Google Shopping. So go to your local Sainsbury's, Asda, if you're in America, I don't know, maybe Walmart or something like that. Uh, I think Walgreens is another one in America. So go to your local places like that and see if they stop them because sometimes they're not on uh, Google Shopping. Again, if it's a Lego set coming to its end of its sh shelf life, supermarkets are more than likely, to be honest, going to have it at a, a discount percentage, maybe 20%, 30%. So, yeah, just, just be... You've got to be proactive, that's the word. You've got to be proactive in searching out these sets. But if it's a good set, if it's going to get you a good return on investment, it is worth the work of digging for all these different websites, going on Lego Shop at Home, going on to independent retailers. Maybe if you've not got an independent toy retailer in your, in your town, go round your, you know, maybe an area of an hour and go round all the different toy shops and, and look for... So these sets, because guaranteed one of them's going to have the set, um, and one of them may even have it at a discount. So put the work in. You do have to put the work in and go out there, and, and obviously go online as well and put the work in. But it's worth it if that set is going to get you a return of 100, 200, maybe even three or four hundred percent in in the space of one, uh, you know, one, two, three years. That is incredibly, you know, so much better than putting your money in a bank and getting two percent a year. So, you know, obviously. If you want to do this, you've got to put some work in. I want to end on that note, the fact that you do need to put some work in. This course has just been, um, basically, I've given you all the knowledge that have helped me, but the only thing that's going to help you is you actually harnessing that, not this knowledge, and putting it into action. Take action on these steps I've shown you. I'll actually put these steps in the description as well of this course. So if you need to refer back to them, you can do. And I want you to take action. I want you to go out there and I want you to get some of these sets. I want, well, I want you to find a set and I want you to put it through this process. And if it succeeds in this process, if it does well on this process, I then want you to go out there and try and find this depending on what your budget is. So if, if, you, if you've got a budget of $10, $20, $50, $1,000, whatever it is, choose a set, put it through its process, then go out there and find it and maybe invest a small percentage of money of your overall budget in that set. So if you've got a budget of $100, maybe just invest 20 or 30% of that budget in this one set and then find another set and repeat the process and then you've got a bit of a diversified portfolio. So instead of just having one set that you've got all your eggs in one basket, that isn't great. You don't want all your eggs in one basket. So diversify a little bit and I wouldn't really say, have, don't I ever have like, you know, more than like 20, 15, 20% really, uh, maybe about 20%, I'd say, more than that of your overall budget in one set, because otherwise it's, it's kind of a little bit risky on your part doing that. So diversify your portfolio and have plenty of sets that you've uh, obviously got in your portfolio, just in case one doesn't do as well as you were thinking. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there guys. Thank you very much for watching this course. Hi guys, thank you for watching this video till the end. I just wanted to state that this video wasn't sponsored or endorsed by LEGO and all the opinions expressed were that of my own.